So Brian T. City Ortega getting the sub over Yair Rodriguez. You know, things looked a little bit dicey for Brian after the announcement of his name, I mean, right. the guy rolls his ankle before the fight even starts, and he had to kind of play from behind in that first round. He showed a lot of heart. He showed a good chin, and then ultimately he showed what we know him to have that is his best skill set, which are the submissions. So getting it done in true T-City form, and he knocked off the number three guy. And, of course, it's in anybody who knocks off the number three ranked guy in the world, you're going to start setting your sights on the champion. And he did just that with respect to Alexander Volkanovsky, of course, saying if Volk wants to take some time off, I would love to jump in there and take on Taporia and take my crack at the 145 belt. And I think that could be the direction the UFC goes. One, T-City is a known commodity. People know who Brian Ortega is. He's marketable. He, he finishes people. He's durable. And so when you start to look at potential next opponents for Taporia, I know he's calling out Sugar Sean O'Malley, Conor McGregor, Islam Makashev, pretty much anybody besides people that are in the rankings at 145. I think the UFC is going to make him fight a 145er in his first title defense. And I think Ortega might be a good option. Yeah, well, just to talk about that seconds before the fight issue that he had when Bruce Buffer's announcing his name, uh, that was one of the craziest things I've ever seen. And I always think when people are stomping their feet on the ground or jumping, that there's some sort of issue that's going to take place. Maybe they're going to break their foot or roll their ankle. And then we finally see yep. it. But luckily, he's a, a man of God and he's, uh, his faith is strong. So he was able to pray, send a prayer up, a Hail Mary, if you will. <laughs> and he answered it and he was able to fight with no issues. But uh, I don't want to talk too much about the X's and O's about that fight, but I think it's important to talk about how T-City fought to get his hand raised and how, to, how he did it to basically get the fight where he needs to fight. Look, T-City is good everywhere, but everybody knows his bread and butter is grappling. And there was a, a time there a couple fights ago where he was really sitting back with like a karate style. And for me, that just wasn't the move for him. He needs to be aggressive. He needs to push the pace ultimately get his opponent against the cage and then drag them down and do what he does best, which is submit people. And I think that was the reason he got his hand raised. And I think that also is the reason he's set up for a title fight. Now I think beating Yair Rodriguez should basically get you number one contendership. But when you do it like that and you're able to finish him and, and look really good doing it, all of that coupled with the fact that Alexander Volkanovsky needs six months or so to heal and, and take some time off, and Max Holloway signed to take on Justin Gaethje in the buff, uh, BMF title fight, there's nobody else really at the top of 145 that sticks out quite like Brian Ortega to get the next shot at Ilya Taporia. And if I'm, you know, the UFC, I'm the matchmakers, and I saw how little damage Taporia took in his title fight against Volkanovski just a couple weeks ago, I'm wanting to get this young superstar, this guy who really has the makings and all of the ingredients to be a super special fighter for the UFC and get a ton of fans in a part of the world that's always been uh, fight, fav fight fans, but, yeah. uh, but Spain never really had that guy. Now they've got that guy. Georgia never really had that guy. Now they've got that guy. And I think Ilya needs to, they need to strike while the iron's hot with Ilya. They need to get him active. He didn't take any damage. I'd love to see him fight soon. And it, I mean, aside from the ankle rolling, I don't think T-City took very much damage. He's going to need a couple cuts to heal on his face, but I think they got their guy. We finally have some answers at 145 as to who should get the next title fight. And unless... Max Holloway goes out there and destroys Justin Gaethje, which I'm not very bullish on. I think that's going to be a war. Unless he goes out there and finishes him, goes out unscathed and barely you know, takes any damage, I don't really see them uh, waiting around for Ilya. I think they need to put T-City in there. That's a perfect first uh, title defense for Ilya Taporia. I think it's a winnable fight for Ilya. And it gives you another good opportunity to have Brian Ortega in a fight, you know, if you're anything more than a casual fan, you know who T-City is and you like him, you like his story, and you like his fighting style. Look, he goes in there, he's got his finishing ways, and he's exciting to watch even on the ground, which a lot of people, they gripe about. Man, stand him up. When T-City's on the ground, they don't want you to stand him up. They want to see what he's about to do down there because what he does on the floor is pretty special. Yeah, no doubt about it. And when you talk about potential opponents for Ilya, Obviously, the UFC is not keen on making champ champs immediately now. They had right. that era, and that era was fun while it lasted. But let's be honest, it did cause a lot of divisions to get stagnant and stale. Right. And to, you sacrifice you know, great fights and potential trilogies and things of that nature in order to freeze two divisions simultaneously and put two guys together. Right. So 
I like a lot of the stuff Ilya Taporia is doing, and I'm also a little bit annoyed by some of the stuff he's doing too, saying yeah. things like, I'm not going to give Max Holloway a chance. I'm not going to give Yair a chance. This was before the Brian Ortega fight. Things like that. You know, that's not the right approach when you're a new champion in the UFC. And right. I get that he wants these marquee fights. And he's a very marketable fighter. And if he continues to win, he's going to get those fights. But let's be real. Ilya Taporia is not getting Conor McGregor. Nope. He's not getting Islam Makhachev. He's not getting Sugar Sean O'Malley, at least right now. That's probably the most likely uh, opponent Super fight. that's not in his weight class mm -hmm. would be Sugar. Connor's never coming back down to 45 again. Connor's never even coming back down to 55 again. Agreed. We'll be lucky if we see Connor in the UFC. Welterweight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or just in the UFC in general. So the reality of the matter is it's cool to talk a big game. It's cool to, to talk about what's coming in the future. But those things in the future can't come until you solve the problems of right now. Yeah. And right now, Ilya Taporia needs a good title defense against a worthy opponent who's a featherweight. And that guy is Brian T. City Ortega or Mavsar Volev. So yeah. you take your pick. But, right. you know, I think for the fans, for Ilya Taporia, for the UFC, they would prefer it to be T. City. One, because he's certainly got way more finishes than Mavsar. He's been around longer. He's higher up in the rankings. Yes, I understand Mavsar is undefeated and he's been very active, but he has yet to get a finish inside the UFC. Right. It's a hard sell to get a guy that speaks very little English with no finishes in the UFC to come in and take a title fight, which is going to be a very diff difficult stylistic matchup for the champion. So I think the UFC wants to see Taporia as a champion. I think they see the future in Taporia. They also see a fun potential matchup between him and Ortega. And yes, Ortega is as good as they get on the ground. But Ilya Taporia's striking is way better than Brian's. It's levels oh, yeah. ab above T-Cities. And Ilya is also a great wrestler. So getting him to the ground is going to be difficult. Ilya should be able to dictate where the fight takes place. And also, by the way, Way, a lot of his fights were, are, were finished by submission before he entered the UFC. So he's no slouch when it comes to submissions either. So we might see some great grappling exchanges between those two. And as you said, unless Max Holloway starches Justin Gaethje and comes out unscathed, then that would change my opinion. Then right. I would say, okay, Max Holloway is the guy just from sheer you know, track record in history. Max Holloway's top three featherweight of all time. Right. He would deserve the fight. But I think all of us can pretty much sit here and comfortably say, that I don't know which way um, Gaethje versus Holloway is going to go, but it's not going to go the way of unscathed for either one of those gentlemen. Right, absolutely. And the BMF title is a real title. It's actually the most rare belt you can possibly hold in all of combat sports. And I, I'm with you. That fight's going to be a war. I don't really see it just being like a, a one-punch KO type of thing. I think this is going to be a great fight. It's exactly what the fans are going to uh, expect to get is what they're going to get. It's not going to be like Derek Lewis versus Francis Ngannou where we're like, it's going to be amazing and then it ends up being yeah. a dud. I, I think that Ilya Taporia, though, I, we need to focus on them because uh, the 145 needs to have some parity. It needs some fresh blood. And I think that T-City is the right guy to move in. But... I'm, I'm with you 100% on Ilya Taporia's call-outs. Look, as a competitor, as a fight fan, as somebody who doesn't miss a UFC card, nothing makes my blood boil more, more than when Joe Rogan, Daniel Cormier, John Anik, Paul Felder, whoever's on the microphone at that night, uh, talks to the winner of the fight and asks them, of course, like they ask everybody, who do you want to see next? I'm never going to get onto somebody for making a call-out, but the only thing just as bad or slightly better than... Uh, not calling anyone out saying, I'll take whoever fights. You know, I don't care who I fight next because then that makes the fans say, well, if you don't care who you fight next, how am I supposed to care who you fight right. next? Uh, the only thing I hate less, a little bit less than that is when you call out Conor McGregor in your first title fight. Sure, or yeah. when you call out somebody that you have absolutely no f intentions on fighting right now or you know the UFC has no interest in putting you in there. Like, yeah, Ilya Taboria has the same chance of fighting Francis Ngannou as he does Can Conor McGregor right exactly. now. Exactly. Like, let's not waste our bullets on stupid call-outs just so you can say somebody's name and then Conor ultimately gets to trump you by not even mentioning you, not even saying anything back, not even responding, pretending like you're peanuts down there and then just say, you know what, let the 45er have his fun, try to say something just to get my name in his mouth, try to make, him, uh, make himself stay relevant. So. And the same thing can be said for Islam Makashev too. Is True. There's nothing that Taporia has to offer for Makashev right no. now. First of all, you know, truthfully, that was a very impressive win against 
against Volk. I don't want to take anything away from Teporia. Right. But Islam Makashev is a different animal, and Islam Makashev is not coming down to 45. So if you want to fight him, you got to go up to 55. There's way too many content. You know, you have the BMF fight that's about to happen between Holloway and Gaethje. Certainly, if Gaethje gets his hand raised, he could he could stake a claim. Yeah. You have Armin Sarukian, who had a, a close decision loss to Islam when he was only 22 years old, his mm-hmm. first fight in the UFC. He's gone on a tear, and he's fighting Du Bronx. The winner of that fight certainly lays a claim. And to be honest, either one of those outcomes against Islam would be just as big as Islam versus Taporia right now. So Taporia, while yes, calling people out, saying I want the big fight, saying I want the, the, the marquee matchups is something that you expect out of somebody who's becoming the new so- superstar in the UFC, but it's a bit early. He needs to defend the belt against a 145 or first, and I think T-City is the guy for it. T-City's got a great finishing style. He's durable. The fans like him. It's also super winnable for Taporia, as you said. And so I think all things are pointing to uh, T-City versus Taporia as his first title defense. And I think Ilya should be happy with that. If he wants to talk about super fight post, post T-City, make it Sean O'Malley. Right. But Conor McGregor, Islam Makhachev, those are totally off the table for right now. Right. And the only way T-City doesn't deserve it, and I'm not saying he doesn't at this point, current moment but if if max holloway goes in there in a more high profile fight which is the bmf title fight and beats justin gaethje and is able to finish him and make a quick return then of course uh t city is going to have to take a sidestep because max holloway then deserves it if if alexander volkanovsky didn't exist on planet earth max holloway would have one of the most epic runs in in (laughs) ufc history for for sure the most epic run at 145 and that includes jose aldo's so i think that Islam Makhachev and, and the guys that he did call out, Conor McGregor, have their hands full with real 55ers, have their hands full with 170ers. And while Islam's looking at champ champ status up there, he's not even thinking about guys underneath him. He's only focused on the guys at the top of 155 and then some of those superstars at, at 170. Ilya has no business trying to go up there. I think what he needs to do right now is lay a good foundation down at 145, make himself undeniable, and then the UFC is going to say, hey, I think we, we could consider this champ champ status for you. But now that you've done your body of work, you deserve it. If you would have, you know, gotten it right after you beat Volkanovski in the very first fight for your title, it just doesn't make as much sense. Agreed.